going straight to that story now. The fight against cancer continues. Scientists at Stellenbosch University are researching existing chemotherapy drugs and personalized therapies. One of their main focuses is some patients' resistance to medication. For more on this, we are joined by Professor Annemart Engelbrecht. Professor, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us on Newsnight this evening. Can you tell us, first of all, what is meant by personalized chemo treatments? What's the thinking behind it? So currently, um, cancer patients receive actually a one-size-fits-all therapy where a certain chemotherapeutic regime is given, for example, for a specific type of cancer. But we all have different genetic makeups and also different lifestyles and different environment. And that is why a personalized treatment is this takes all these factors into account. So it takes our genetic makeup into account as well as the tumor genetic makeup, our lifestyle as well as environmental factors to tailor a therapy specific for that specific person. Tell me about some of the research being conducted by students at Marty's around these personalized chemotherapies. Now, so the main research of our, of the main focus of our research group is specifically to develop um, a, a testing protocols for cancer patients so that we can determine if the cancer patient will be resistant to a certain therapy before the therapy commences. And if we understand the resistance profile of each patient before the treatment, it will avoid an unnecessary and ineffective treatment. It will prevent all these adverse events, improve the quality of life of the patient, and it will also lead to reduced mortality and morbidity. And then we are also collaborating with the engineers at the engineering faculty to develop sensors for the early detection of cancer. So one of the PhD students who have graduated recently has developed a sensor for the early detection of pancreatic cancer. And furthermore, we also develop, uh, we also collaborate with people from chemistry and botany and um, where we're developing nanodrug delivery systems for phytopharmaceuticals. So this is extracts from plants with cancer killing abilities. So these nanodrugs can then be manufactured to deliver the chemotherapeutic agent specifically and directly to the cancer cells and um, also to prevent then the resistance and um, drug resistance in the end. Such incredibly interesting work being done. I want to come back to some of those uh, research developments in a bit. But first of all, can you tell us, and I know it's quite a complex um, you know, uh, system of thinking behind it. It's not quite easy to explain. But, but if you could tell us why some patients are resistant to certain chemo drugs, what causes that? You know, cancer cells are actually extremely um, intelligent cells, so they can adapt to the environment. They can gain um, genetic mutations to adapt to a specific environment and also for them to spread to distant organs. And these cells also, because normal cells have these protective mechanisms, so if there's some um, adverse events or some circumstances that's not good for the normal cells, then they can actually reduce these, say for instance, there are some chemicals that will harm the normal cells, then they can upregulate certain proteins that can get rid of these, of these chemicals from the cell. And that is the same with cancer cells doing so. They gain some mutations which upregulate these protective proteins. And then this, these proteins are upregulated to such an extent that the cancer cells then get, um, gain resistance towards the chemotherapeutic drugs. And that is the mechanism what they do. So they upregulate also different pathways and they can really do a lot of different things to evade the um, toxicity of the chemotherapeutic agents. Hmm. Chemo has a bad reputation. Um, some uh, cancer patients have, have said in the past that, you know, while you're fighting uh, cancer, fighting to stay alive, you're also fighting to try and survive this very harsh therapy. We understand it's, it's necessary. But is chemotherapy still the best method to fight cancer? Yeah, so I think it is the best available method to South Africans and the people in the, on the African continent because the newest generation of therapy is actually immunotherapy. But immunotherapy is extremely expensive and not many people can afford immunotherapy. Um, and also a reason why it's so difficult to 
develop and why people are sometimes resistant towards cancer therapies because cancer cells evolve from our own cells. So it, they are not quite so different from our own cells. So that is why it's so different to develop a, a targeted spe a therapy, which is are very, very specific for the cancer cells because the cancer cells look very similar to our mm -hmm. own cells. But, but at the moment, it is still the best available therapy and um, affordable therapy in South Africa. Looking at how chemotherapies have evolved over time, and it's very interesting that you mentioned that certain therapies, you know, are, are you know, a, available to South Africans because they are cheaper. Talk to us about the, the availability of, of different therapies and how these have evolved over time to, to give patients perhaps a little bit more choice or alternatives in, in which course of treatment they follow. Yeah, so unfortunately, state patients don't have really much choice because there are only um, so many types of available therapy for them. Um, private sector patients have a little bit more choice in therapy, so they can, um, uh, some medical aids will pay for the immunotherapy, and um, uh, so they have the, um, the choice to actually ask for immunotherapy, but not all medical aids will also pay for the immunotherapy. And um, yeah, so immunotherapy is definitely a new kit on the block. Um, there's also a type of immunotherapy. So immunotherapy is where the body's own immune system is um, harnessed to kill the cancer cells. So with the CAR T cell therapy, this is now the newest type of immune therapy, is where the T cells of your, your own T cells are harvested and then they are genetically modified. And after they are gen modified, then they will be injected again into the patient and then they will kill the cancer cells much more effectively. Mm -hmm. So often uh, one hears about very rare or new forms of cancer and doctors really struggling to, to get to a definitive diagnosis for some patients. Um, and that must be a very trying process in itself even before the treatment uh, starts. So with all these new therapies or new forms of cancer treatment that you mentioned a little bit earlier, the, the nanotherapy, the early uh, diagnosis um, uh, methods that are now being developed by students and researchers and medical professionals all over. How close are we getting to really understanding what cancer is, how it works, and trying to figure out, um, you know, quicker, more effective methods of, of giving patients some relief? I think we are, yeah, this, because of the, um, the AI revolution, I think we are really very close um, to get to a point where we can really effectively treat a cancer patients. As I've said previously, that it's really important to take the whole patient into account so that we don't just do this one size fits all therapy. So I think as soon as we have the harnesses, the patient's genetic makeup and also the tumor's genetic makeup, and then all the, take all the other factors into account and then set up a protocol and also maybe a flow chart for each patient and with the, the, um, um, with the help of artificial intelligence then we can just incorporate all for each patient the different scenarios and then we can maybe in the end get um, very effective therapy that are very specific for the cancer cells and will not um, um, be so toxic to the normal cells in the body. Mm. So I don't think we are so far from a really a good effective therapy for cancer. That's absolutely great news. You did mention earlier, and this is my last question for you uh, before I let you go, that unfortunately, because of resource constraints, uh, many state patients at state hospitals in South Africa uh, don't have access to many of the more advanced or the latest treatment options. They don't have much of a choice in terms of what kind of treatments are available to them, and, and that they are pretty much at the mercy of that one size fits all treatment regime. Um, and that's very daunting because the majority of patients in South Africa fall within that category. How do we change the system to make sure that these patients get access to the same kind of treatment that other people do? Yeah, I think that is why I'm so passionate about personalized therapy because we can actually, in South Africa, we have the knowledge to actually test the patients before they receive the therapy to see if they will be resistant to the specific therapy. So then in the end, they don't have to get the whole regime of all these therapies 
which some of them will definitely not work. So we have already proved our principle in the initial test that we have done, that we have seen that a patient, we have given all the different regimes and we have seen that many patients don't react at all to the different um, therapeutic regimes. So we, we can just give specific therapies to a specific patient and which will then in the end lead to much lower morbidity and mortality. Um, due to getting the wrong therapy in the end. And this will also reduce the cost extremely in the um, public sector. So that is why we want to get, as soon as possible, we want to set up an ISO accredited lab that we can test out African patients and determine their resistant profile before they are getting the therapy so that they can get optimal therapy. And we definitely have the skills and the knowledge to do that. So that is, we must just complete our clinical study at the moment, and then um, uh, very soon we can set up a lab to do that. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. Uh, certainly good news uh, for anyone with cancer that we are making such great strides uh, into tackling this horrific disease.